RC. Hey everybody, welcome to another quick save review with me, RC, here on Video Chums. Today we're going to be taking a look at Evil Defenders. Now this is a new tower defense game on the Switch. I think this is on PC as well. I can't confirm that. I don't know. The version we're playing today is the Switch though. Uh, part of me wishes it was on PC though. I, I hope it is because... Control-wise, this game controls fine. It uses, you know, the, your regular Nintendo Switch controller, whatever you're using, Joy-Con, Pro Controller. But, as you know, tower defense games work exceedingly well and much better with a mouse. And that's kind of where I'm at with this game, where I'm enjoying it, I'm having fun with it, but one of the biggest problems I have with it is the fact that I'm using a controller. I think that they actually have done the best that they can to graph these to a gamepad controls, but it still makes me miss the mouse. Maybe if I never used the mouse for tower defense games in the past, it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but as it is right now, it's something I definitely miss. However, the game itself is actually really, really cool. Uh, do you like tower defense games? Cool, because if you do, you're gonna love this one. That's what it is. Through and through, it is a tower defense game. So, if we jump in here, you're gonna see this is basically the whole land right here. What I, I've done some math and I found out, because you'll, you'll see on their product description page for this game that they tout uh, over 90 levels or 90 missions or something like that. But what that actually means is that there are actually 15 levels and each level, we'll go to the very first one here, each level has 15 stars that you can you can get. So 15 times 15, it's like 200 something. We could actually go look it up right now. Because um, at any point, if you go to, if you hit the uh, right button on your D-pad, you could check out your progress. And once this loads up, you can see that there are, there are a ton of, of uh, achievements to get, which are really cool actually. If you get all the achievements, or at least some of them, uh, they're gonna give you uh, points towards upgrading your troops. And we'll get to that in just a second here. So statistics. Uh, you can see that we have 27 out of the 225 stars. That That is what it was. And you can see that I played about a, a three and a half hours of this. The, the reason being is that, you know, you figure you jump into a tower defense game, you think, okay, it's tower defense. Like, what more do you need to talk about? But this one has a little bit of a different uh, approach to tower defense that I've seen. There's a, there's a lot of... Um, I guess you could put it, there's a lot of grind in it, based on the fact that there's only 15 levels and 3 stars per, uh, or 15 stars per, 3 stars per uh, mission that you go on here. Um, but one of the big things that this game offers is upgrades. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second here. We'll, we'll go into, you can see this very first level, I finished 3 stars on the standard, 3 stars on Nightmare, 3 stars on Chaos. And you can actually see on the main board that I've only made it to, let's see, one, two, three, four. I'm only on the fifth level. So the, actually the difficulty in this game ramps up really quick to the point where I uh, got to this uh, fifth level here uh, with the little gate in the, the icon there. And I actually was not able to finish it. And you know how it goes with tower defense games. Um, if you end up failing, at the last wave of a of a tower defense level, you're immediately like, I just wasted 20 minutes! And that's how, how it felt like here. Uh, so, the game, uh, it doesn't really tell you about it as far as like tutorials go and that kind of thing, but it, it seems to really push you towards replaying levels to garner upgrade points to use upgrades. So here, what we'll do is we'll, we'll play through the super simple standard very first level here. This is like cut and dry, the easiest level in the game. Um, but the very first time that I played it, I actually got only two out of the three stars. So this is a more, like I said, a more challenging approach to the whole idea. Uh, so you can see we got this cool little waterfall here. And you control uh, putting your towers in different areas by just using the uh, stick to move around. And you can see to select different ones, you just hit A. Um, it's a little wonky at times because, you know, in this area here, you got to hit up to go to that one. If you hit over, it'll actually go to that one. But if you hit over from here, it'll go down to this one instead of going up. It's it's really weird. So when you're in the heat of battle, sometimes it's hard to make sense of what you're doing. So here, let's get a couple of towers in. You get an orc cannon. Coordinates. Aiming. Hell, just and fire. we'll get the crossbow get goblin in as well. Let me make sure the sound is okay over here. Not blowing out everybody's eardrums. Okay. So we got the cannon. We got the uh, goblin tower. That's all we can afford right now because in the top right you can see our hearts. Or top left, rather. You can see our hearts and our gold. We only got 15 gold. That's not enough to afford anything. We'll hit Y just to start the wave. And here come the good guys. You are playing as the bad guys. Like it, like it's called, Evil Defenders. You're an evil team of goblins and orcs and everything trying to uh, kill the good guys here. At any point, you can hit Y again. You get more gold the sooner that you bring a wave out. So sometimes it's important and smart to do that. 
And now we can actually bring out this other uh, set of characters here called, uh, or this other tower called the Old Crypt that brings out this, these skeleton characters here. What I really like about the Old Crypt here is that if you hit A and select it, you can actually select this yellow flag on screen, and you can actually position the skeletons wherever you want. So if we actually want them in the water or closer to the water, we can put them there. And I think that that is really cool. Almost like an RTS uh, type of setup there, which I think is great. Uh, of course, every tower has, uh, uh, you know, the ability to upgrade as well. Uh, this one costs 90 to upgrade, while the Orc Cannon costs 180. The Orc Cannon is very powerful. Uh, there are differences between them, though. The Orc Cannon actually can't hit flying uh, units that are going by, and you are going to get dudes that are flying through on wings trying to, trying to get by you. Um, and, you know... Uh, this guy uh, apparently can't hit them out of the air. Uh, these guys, the skeletons on the ground, also can't do that. Uh, in addition to those things, you also have some spells that you can use. So in the bottom left, you'll see that we have a lightning bolt, you'll see that we have a swirl, and we have uh, the big demon devil dude. Uh, so if we use the portal, you can see it actually zap that guy back. So it takes them and throws them back a little bit. Uh, we're already hitting wave five here. We'll use the lightning in the next wave here. We'll bring the bring the wave on quickly. And we'll upgrade our skeletons. You can see our skeletons uh, now have a new helmet. Um, one of the things I really like about this game is that uh, it's it's quite a pretty game. I would say that the good guys have a very scary look because they got these gigantic weird lips that take up their whole face. Um, but the, the art style and aesthetic of this game is actually quite beautiful. I love that the skeletons and everybody uh, are animated so well. I mean, look at the, the orc cannon guy sitting on his, his cannon there. He's ready to go. Whenever he's shooting, you could see his foot actually push on the pedal and everything. Like, everything is beautifully animated. And we're gonna upgrade our skeletons one more time here. Let's use our lightning bolt so you guys can see it. Boom! It's overkill for this level. We don't really need it that, that badly here. I just wanted to show it off here. And once we get to the final wave, we will also uh, use our uh, demon guy too. Uh, we're... Not quite at the point where we can upgrade that guy. Let's bring them on. You're also going to get cold, uh, gold for killing enemies like you normally do in any tower defense game. No big surprise there, right? But what's interesting about a lot of these abilities is you're going to find yourself really using them in certain situations. Times you're going to be wishing you had the ability to send a guy back a bit because he's getting really close to the uh, end of your level. In this particular level, if any... Uh, of those dudes make it to the very right side there. Here we can actually upgrade our goblin tower. There we go. Goblin tower upgraded. You can see he looks completely different than he did before. Beautiful art. Really, really uh, nicely animated and whatnot. But yeah, if any guy makes it to the right there, you're going to lose hearts in your top left. You lose any hearts at all, you're going to go down to a two-star rating. I think if you go down to below 10 hearts or 12 hearts, something like that, you get one-star rating. Uh, and you don't want that to happen. Alright, we are... Bring out the last wave here. Let's summon our uh, devil dude. At any point, you can summon this devil guy, and he will just wreak havoc on these guys. He'll go in there and just start punching away. I'm fireproof. You are not. Look at him go. Some of the things he says in the game are pretty cringeworthy. They're not great, um, but I, I think kids will get a kick out of it if they're playing it. Um, it's real basic, like movie quotes and that kind of stuff. And there you have it. Not too shabby. Uh, one of the other things I want to point out with this game that I do like is the music. I think the music is really good. It kind of reminds me of... Uh, there's a series called Tie the Tasmanian Tiger that came out back in like the PS2 era. And um, because they actually used like real instruments during that. It wasn't all you know synthesized guitars and stuff like that. It was real guitars. And this has that same kind of feel to it. Same, you know, deserty bass guitar type sound. It's really cool. So you see those little ghost things on screen. Those are actually our upgrade points, which we're going to go use right now. I'm going to show you the upgrade menu because that's sort of what sets this game a a apart from other tower defense games that I played. Those of you who are tower defense uh, uh, crazies out there who play a lot of them. Oops, accidentally hit down. You still see the same amount of stars that I've gotten there. Um, those of you who have played a lot of tower defense games, you might be like, oh yeah, they've had upgrade stuff in, in plenty of different uh, tower defense games. But in this one, uh, I apologize, you can't actually see it because my webcam is blocking, but I have 222 little ghost points. I don't know what they're supposed to be, actually. Uh, but each one of the icons on the bottom represents different uh, different towers and, and, and different guys that are going to help you get through the game. So the very first one in blue on the bottom left that we have currently selected is the... Uh, 
uh, the goblin tower that throws the spears. Uh, then you're going to get the skeletons who hang out on land that you saw. Then you're going to get the uh, goblin uh, orc, or orc cannon guy. Um, now, it took it took me a second to try to remember all of the icons and everything like that, which isn't a big deal. It's very board game-ish to, to remember like the iconography as opposed to like any words or whatever. But I think it could it could have hurt them to be you know in the very top center for them to put like the name of the thing that you're currently upgrading. Um, but this is another situation where I wish I had a mouse because actually to figure out what all of these things do, you know that if you were playing it on the PC, you would hover over any of these squares and it would give you the tooltip. But for these, you have to hit A. And then you'll see the tooltip, but then you'll hit A again to confirm that that's what you want to pick. And sometimes when I see this tooltip pop up, I think I have to hit B, but then that'll throw me back out to the main menu again. And I, I earlier when I was doing upgrades, it was making me so irritated because I kept hitting B and going out when I was trying to pick my upgrades. And I was getting, <laughs> I was getting pretty frustrated. Um, I kind of wish that it would just like automatically put the tooltip out instead of making you have to push A to have them pop out. Um, little things like that, little UI things in this game are really what the, the you know, what irritate me. Because the game itself is a good tower defense game. Uh, so you can see here, this is actually, these are actually some towers we haven't used yet. This is actually a magician's tower. It's a little magic guy that like, you know, throws uh, magic bolts at dudes as they walk by. Um, this one is the, uh, I think it's called the sleeping dragon or something like that. And he uh, kind of snoozes near enemies and every now and then will like yawn or sneeze or something and he'll actually slow down on the units as they walk by which is kind of cute uh so they come up with a lot of clever little things in this game uh to you know uh unify the theme but it's still everything you'd expect from tower defense slow down you know uh uh anti-air damage you know ground damage all that stuff is still here they just disguise it as other little things which is kind of clever all right um this is one of the things that is probably the going to be the most helpful uh, helpful to you in this game when you when you get to the point where you're upgrading is in this very last icon um, you're going to find a lot of stuff for upgrading your gold so for example it, it'll increase the amount of gold that you start with in every mission which is helpful uh, you can uh, you'll also get more for killing different enemies as long as you're upgrading this stuff uh, and then that goes on just to uh, delay wave start um, Reduces the landmark a activation by uh, 5%. We'll get into landmark activations in a second here. Uh, and it also increases your health. So it'll give you uh, 21 hearts instead of 20, which is pretty helpful. Of course, you can upgrade all of your abilities too. If you want your lightning strike to be to recharge faster, which we might actually pick here. Uh, or if you want it to be more, pow more powerful, you can also do that. So let's go ahead and pick that one. And I think we're down to... Yeah, we got 82 points left, but I don't think we can actually upgrade anything with that. We might be past that. That one has 90, which is close. Uh, okay, so we are fully upgraded. Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out, too. One of the reasons why you have to go back and replay old levels is to get stars, right? Now, you'll see that in the top there that you need at least 30 stars to unlock this whole branch. And I think that is, the, yeah, it's the same for everybody. So as long as we get three more stars, we're going to be able to unlock everything that you see here. But you're not really going to be able to make it through the whole game without going back, getting stars, and unlocking more powerful abilities. It's just not going to happen. At least it wasn't happening for me. I found it to be quite difficult as it went on. All right. So let's go to another level. Which one haven't we really played much of? I just did the desert one earlier. Uh, let's let's check this one out because it actually has a landmark thing we could we could try too, and I can actually show you one of the other modes too. Uh, so basically, what happens is when they upgrade it uh, to the different uh, difficulties, standard is standard, right? That's that's all it is. However, nightmare uh, turns your ten waves into fifteen. Chaos turns your ten waves into twenty. So it does get more and more uh, interesting that way. Um, and of course, they have a leaderboard, but it's only local. Which is unfortunate. Be cool if they had an online leaderboard for that. Uh, what is in the second one here? Mm, yeah, let's let's stick with this one here. Let's do chaos on this one. Let's earn another three stars. Let's get our thirty stars. What do you guys say to that? I think it's a good idea, RC. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. So at this point, we jump in. You can see we hit. We're at one uh, wave one out of twenty. And the way I was building this stuff before was I would put more I'm cannon here. And of course, whenever you go to select a tower, you can see its, it's uh, range, which is important. So we're going to go ahead and put a crossbow guy there. 
We'll put our old crypt guy there. And we will move our skeletons up just a bit to about here. And we got 89 left. I'm thinking we want to put a crossbow and guy there. See, arrow in the knee. Some of the voice stuff is just like, yeah, okay, it's from movies and it's from older games and stuff. It's stuff that at least in my, for me, like is stuff that makes me kind of roll my eyes a little bit because I'm like, oh, the arrow in the knee joke again? Oh boy. We're still making jokes to that. All right. That's a hard thing with like old school video game humor and stuff too, right? It's, it's funny when you're with your friends and you mention it. But it's not funny when someone actually puts it in their game and you're kind of like, oh boy, you know. I'm sure I'm sure to some people they, they find it humorous, which is totally fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. But to me, I'm just like, oh boy. Oh boy, you couldn't have written something a little bit better? Give the characters a little bit more uh, of their own personality. All right, so here we're going. And uh, like any tower defense game, you just kind of wait, wait, wait. Uh, but you can speed it up. We are now at times four, but you can slow it back down to one, like so, just in case. A lot of times I find myself at the beginning of a wave speeding it up to speed the beginning of the wave up and then slowing it down immediately, like this, so that way you can see what's going to happen right now. Um, I'm waiting to build, there we go, we can build this guy now. So here's the magician guy, who becomes really, really powerful as you upgrade him. And I wouldn't mind another one of him right here. Build one there too. Uh, one of the other things that I'm not the biggest fan of in this game is that they don't tell you what sort of enemies you're going to encounter in uh, in the game uh, or in the mission that you're currently uh, joining. Because you know I played other tower defense games where here let's go ahead and lightning these guys. Boom. Now of course you got to be careful picking uh, where you're going to use your lightning and your demon guy and everything like that because you know you got to wait for that to recharge. So you got to be careful. Uh, we are two away from upgrading this guy, or we can actually upgrade the skeletons. Let's get them first. Uh, but yeah, you would think before every mission they would let you know, hey, you need to prepare because there's going to be flying guys in this one. I found that when I join a mission, you kind of have to play the mission first to figure out what's going to come in that. And then you, it's like a trial and error thing, which kind of bothers me a little bit because I wouldn't create any orc cannon guys at all if I knew that those uh, other dudes were coming. So that, that kind of gets to me just a little bit. Here, let's make our demon guy here. He'll fight these guys. You suffer for eternity. I'm fire. Run, potatoes, run. Here we go. Take him out. You are not. I'll make you there we go. For eternity. And we can almost upgrade one of our magician guys. We're going to wait to upgrade those guys first. Was hardly an exercise. We apparently just got some kind of an achievement there. Achievements are going to give us more upgrade points. Always a good thing. Okay, we're almost at the upgrade point here. Take that guy out. Alright, we're going to have to take him out. Oh, that was an accident. Okay, here. Upgrade him. There we go. We got him. Now he's got a cool blue robe. Alright, we're going to transfer him. Or, uh, yeah, transfer this guy back here. Take that guy out a bit, and we are going to get another orc spear or goblin spear thrower dude here. Take him out. Thank you. So this is a guy we may have to bring back. We'll see. It depends on which whether he's going to go left or right here. Okay, they got him. We're good, and we're doing really we're doing really good here. Not too shabby. We are going to go ahead and upgrade this goblin. Pop that guy, one, at least one of them back here, so the goblin can get him again. Go! Nope. Get him, skeletons, get him! And they need 86 to update. The adept needs 215. Okay, bring on the next dudes. Okay, we got our lightning, we got our portal. Our devil's going to be back shortly here. We're almost through all the waves. So let's speed it up here. Just a little bit. Might be a good idea to actually upgrade the uh, Orc Cannon. 
next up here too. All right, I'm gonna use lightning on those guys. Slow it down, slow it down. How much does he need? 180, let's get him. That's gonna be helpful. Now, here is the, um, the what they call the landmark. Uh, it's like this little wind rune thing here. We have control over it. What I just did was I activated it with 25 gold to slow these guys down. Uh, I didn't have to use it there. I just wanted to show you guys how it worked. Um, but it's a, it's a really cool little thing that they put in most of the levels as a landmark thing that will help out. One of them has a big gas bubble, and when you explode it, it'll put noxious gas all the way around where the bubble is at, which I thought was pretty clever. Um, and it also has a cooldown, so you have to wait to use it again uh, if you're actually swimming in that much gold, which would be nice. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and upgrade that guy. We're at wave 10. We're doing pretty good here. I'm gonna upgrade these guys. And... No, I, we're still doing good. We don't need the portal just yet. We try to save the devil guy for the last couple of waves, because that's really when you're gonna need him. Sometimes they send those really powerful guys through who have, like, self... Uh, they, they put barriers around themselves so they can walk around easily without, you know, having to deal with uh, you actually taking damage off of them and that kind of thing. Um, one thing that I really like about the uh, uh, the third, or this would be the, the actually the fourth upgrade, is that they give you an option to completely change uh, your character. So, for example, our skeletons here, uh, last game, actually used the Knight's Grave. I turned them into uh, a bunch of undead knights, which was pretty awesome. Uh, can the Adept upgrade? The Adept is really close to upgrading. I'm not sure I want to use... We're going to use lightning here, though. There we go. Upgrade the add up. There we go. Now he's at level three, and he's at a point too where like you could pick between these. You could make a fire apprentice, an ice adept, or a dark druid, and it completely changes again. Changes the look of what your characters look like. Uh, I really like the knight characters for the skeletons, so we'll try to get them in here in just a second. Now this is the only time you're actually going to see these really unique buildings, though, is when you are going through these really long wave-based uh, levels here. If you happen to be uh, doing a 10 wave, uh, you know, standard level, you're more than likely not going to see these really cool upgraded dudes. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to, you're not going to have enough time and gold to get up to that point. So you're going to have to do these really, really long waves for that to happen. Um, we're really close to getting those guys to knighthood. These guys are kind of closing in. Here we go. Lightning, boom. So this might be a good chance to use this guy. We'll have him get in there. We'll bring in the next round here. And we'll turn change these guys to knights. Look at that. They fade away. Look at the cool knights. They're awesome. And we'll upgrade our, our goblin too. Now the goblin really has some cool upgrades here. He has this one called Little Spammer, which I really like. It's basically like he sits up there with a machine gun and he just constantly pegs them with machine gun bullets. Really, really powerful. Really helpful. We'll pop that guy back. You see we're on wave 13. They're starting to send these like really, really heavy knights uh, towards us now. Uh, there we go. They're having a real hard time killing my knights, I'll tell you that. Look at that. Dude is done. Didn't even kill my knights. Skeletons will go down like that most of the time. Knights, not so much. Uh, how much do I need for the Goblin Spammer? 200. We might be able to get that one up there, too. Or maybe I should upgrade this guy. He's 155. Maybe we'll do him first. Wow, these guys aren't even getting close. Upgrade this dude, level 2. Now, truth be told, though, I haven't had a chance to get the Orc Cannon up that high because his upgrades are so expensive. I've never gotten to pass this 260 tier. So I've never gotten to see, like, what he gets to do after the fact, unfortunately. So hopefully that'll be in the cards soon. There we go. That was a nice kill. And we'll bring on the next round. Wave 15.
Nothing's really happening. Oh no! That's right, because uh, these guys are... Uh, they're ranged, so they're actually killing my knights from afar, which is why they weren't moving. That is annoying. But we are going to switch this guy to the machine gun sapper guy here. Check this out. Very helpful. Very cool. Oh, no one was there when I put the portal down. So that means either the portal will disappear and no one uses it, it's a waste, or someone will eventually make their way over there. Yeah, it was, it was a waste, unfortunately. It happens. And who do we want to upgrade now? We might as well get our... This guy here. There we go. Never gotten him up to this point before. So his upgrades are actually to make a napalm cannon, orc generator, with chain lightning. Attacks a specific target, cannot attack flying enemies. I think this one, the orc generator, can actually attack flying enemies though, which is pretty helpful that he can finally get to that point. I don't think there are ever any flying enemies in this round though. So you see that guy is actually giving people a bubble so they, you know, take less damage, which can be a huge pain. We're going to use Let's this guy for this guy here, because that guy who bubbles can be real pain. Good, bad, Set whatever. this guy back, too. I have the gun. There we go. Bring on the next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those upgrades are so expensive. So these guys, uh, the knights can actually be upgraded again too, which I was not aware of. So you can just keep upgrading them and making them more powerful. But at 300, I might do a fire. Let's see what the fire apprentice looks like here. Oh wow, he's got more range now too. He's shooting from way back there. Send somebody back just for fun. All right, bring him on. Who do we got coming? So these little guys with the banners can be really annoying. They'll wave their banners around and the guys behind them will like charge through and run super fast. Uh, there's also some really annoying healing guys too. They wear this like white adept robe and they walk around and they heal the characters as they walk by. And that gets really, really annoying. All right, fight him, knight. We'll set that guy back. Wait for our knights to come back here. So in this particular instance, I could bring the next wave on, but I'm gonna choose to like kind of hang back and see if my guys can take this guy out quickly. This also gives you time for your cooldowns to uh, reset as well. I'm waiting for my demon guy to come back because I feel like I'm gonna need him in the last two waves here. Looks like we're gonna get him. Okay, we can bring him on. Wave 19. Get him! Doing pretty decent damage before they get to the knights, which is pretty helpful. Now the other thing I noticed too is that the knights always go one-on-one. -on -one. They'll never gang up on your characters, which I find interesting. You'd think they'd like really gang up on your knights to take them out quickly, but they don't. There's a little healer guy. I hate... I'm going to try to kill him immediately because he's going to heal those knights and... Give, there we go. Took him out with the lightning. He's going to redo all the damage I've done, which is super annoying. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, wow. I got a lot of... A lot of uh, money here. Let's try the chain lightning with this guy. I want to see what this looks like. Oh, look, it completely changes to like there's a goblin on a wheel, like a hamster wheel. That's really funny. All right, we need 240 for him. I'll upgrade you. All right, bring him on. Final wave. Probably going to be a bunch of ads and then one powerful dude after that. Oh, we got the, the banner guy. Rally the troops. Alright, 
we're gonna get this guy in there. Get in there. Do some damage, man. I don't know where the potato thing comes from. We keep saying, run, potatoes, run. I don't know what that's all about. It's pretty silly, though. We'll send that guy back. Take that. There we go. Okay, take the protector out first. Yes, that's... Oh, wow, that was perfect. So as soon as my demon went down, the knights were there to take over. That's super helpful. So at this point, this is basically like a war on time. Basically, he's going to, you know, take a sweet time getting over to the other side here. And at this point, I want to try to upgrade my characters as much as I can. I can do it with and uh, send him back when I can as well. Like that. And uh, use the lightning as soon as it pops up. There's all kinds of stuff here that I really got to pay attention to. But we might be able to get him here. He's going to be really close. We should be able to send him back again in a second here. You know, with the lightning. There we go. That lightning is, like, super powerful. Okay, this should take him out right now. There we go. We got him. A near perfect. Actually, it wasn't perfect. Nobody got through. So here we're going to count up. Three stars. And we got a 518 little upgrade points. That is a big win right there for sure. Huge win. See the big lips on these guys? Ugh. Can it really creep me out. They got no eyeballs. Their eyes are closed and super squinty, and they got these big lips. They just take up the whole thing of their face. It just creeps me out. All right, uh, let's go upgrade, and then I'll show you guys the level that I was having trouble with. All right, who do we want to upgrade here? I believe that we were dealing with uh, lots of flying characters in this one, which is why I was having trouble. So let's increase attack speed with our characters here. That's going to take us down to 215. We have chance to crit, 4%. Let's do that. We're going to be using a lot of towers in this one, because like I said, uh, lots of flying in this one from what I remember. So let's do it. We're going to be a completely different aesthetic here. The desert. Uh, it seems you have the forest, the desert, and some kind of wintry mountains type thing going on. This one has a very interesting landmark, though. You can see that big set of doors right there. Every now and then, those doors will just open, and they'll let enemies in. So if you see enemies coming from the back end, they're going to come in through there, and you got to be really careful, otherwise they're going to they're going to come in, uh, which is super annoying. Uh, okay, so the apprentice can attack flying enemies. We're going to get him in there. Uh, I'm going to get crossbow dude here, crossbow dude here. He's magic. And I think we're going to be pretty good here. Let's start. We only got to get through the 10 waves here, so let's hope we can do it. But yeah, uh, I remember there being a lot of flying uh, troops in this one trying to take them out. And it was uh, pretty annoying because uh, it doesn't tell you that ahead of time. So they're, they're all flying right through to the exit and I fail. Uh, because my goblin archer guys could not take them out. So that was, a, a I think, a, a pretty much a combination between like them not telling me ahead of time what I needed to have, but also uh, my guys not being upgraded enough yet. And you can see these guys are actually getting pretty far through uh, before I'm actually getting, uh, getting to take them out here. So... Let's set another guy back. We'll do a lightning strike. Because why not? Use it and use it early. So yeah, you see you can select this. You can actually go to the 35 up there, lock it back up if you see characters coming in. Now, the thing that sucks though, sometimes you won't see them popping in. There they are. See, they're, they're walking in. So those are going to open now, and we're going to close it because I don't want to have to deal with those guys. So you got to choose between closing that and letting those guys through or saving your money. I don't want to let them through because they're skipping, you know, a bunch of my towers to get right to the exit over there, which is pretty annoying. I'm going to send that guy back. Uh, I'm going to summon my demon dude because he'll come back by the end, I'm sure. Run, potatoes, okay, so here come the... Uh, run, potatoes, here come run. the flying guys here. My demon dude can't do anything to them, but I'm pretty sure my lightning can. Oh, there's a stupid healer guy. Let's get him out of there. He's the worst. Remember me. There we go. 
He runs so fast, too. He can just catch up with the other, other dudes. Alright, so we can upgrade this guy here. Next wave. We're already halfway through. We're doing much better than we were before. I, I attribute a lot of that to the upgrades. So yeah, you gotta imagine last time I was playing this, I had orc cannons around. And, uh... They were just not helping me out whatsoever. <laughs> These fly, flying dudes would just fly right through. Yeah, let's bring on the next flying guys here, see what happens. Look at these like weird flying guys with the party hats on. Very strange. All right, so that's gonna pop up in a second. We're gonna close it again. I don't want those guys getting through. The last time I played this, we had one of those big guys walking through on the last wave, and that thing I didn't have enough money to close it, and two guys snuck in with them, and I just was not able to do anything to take them out. That was really annoying. Let's send that guy back. Yeah, we're gonna add another, another archer there. See, on these 10 waves, you could see, like, you're barely getting enough money to actually get your... Like, get enough towers on screen for, you know, uh, forget about upgrading them most of the time. Send that guy back. Uh, we can bring on the next wave. Those guys are nothing. And we'll upgrade that guy. I don't know if that guy's riding a sheep or what's going on over there. Here up to 40. We got enough to close those doors if we need to, which we may need to. Bring on the next set of traffic here. Another healer. Hit that guy. There we go. There we go. Send that guy back. These guys are moving quick. Door's about to open. Get up there. Close it. There we go. Alright, we gotta take come out, take these guys out quick. Let's go. I'm gonna build another dude here. And we got the last wave coming here. I wanted to get these guys out of here first so I have the money to close those doors when they open. Because they will be opening, that's for sure. Alright, we'll bring them on. We got enough money now. These guys might be making it if my lightning doesn't show up. Hit that guy. Okay, we got our lightning. Hit him hard. I'm gonna send him back. I don't want anyone getting through. Get him. All right, we're gonna pop our devil dude here. Good, bad, whatever. I have the gun. See, he doesn't have a gun. I don't know what he's talking about. I know it's an Army of Darkness reference. Good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. Pop that guy back again. So I'm saving my gold to close that door because it's, it is going to open. See, that here comes some guys here. I don't want to have to deal with that many dudes at once because that's just going to be hell. Uh, get it selected. There we go. Close it up. We're doing okay here. Let's send this guy back again. I don't know if the lightning does much to that guy. He just walks through without bothering him at all. So we got enough gold to close that door two more times, so hopefully we can get this guy killed by then. But I feel like it's going to be a really close call. Maybe not. I mean, he's close to half... Close to half health. He is moving pretty quick, though. I don't know. What could happen here? Those guys walking through yet? No. Pop him back. About to get lightning. See, if we could... I don't know if we're going to have enough time to have the demon guy come back. It would be nice. But I don't know that we're going to have enough time for that. 
Pop him back. There we go. So this guy we can sell. Because we're not going to need him. That gives us enough money. Nope. Nope. That one. That one. Close it. Thank you. A lot of multitasking. And that should give us enough. No, it doesn't give us enough for that. Well, it'll give us enough to upgrade this guy at least. And I think I'm going to need him to take this guy out in the end here. Oh, no, I'm not. I got my devil guy. Here we go. Now it's done. See, that's how long it takes for that. It's just that one guy, even though he seems to be moving quickly, he's really not. It takes that long <laughs> for him to get through. But I got a perfect on it. I feel good. That's not too shabby. But that level is really hard if you don't go back and play through. You could see that I played through several missions and did a lot of upgrades before I came back. And you're going to face the same thing if you don't remember to go back and grind a little bit. See? Big lips. Big lips. Just, I don't know. Scaring me. Definitely scaring me. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, that is Evil Defenders. Uh, it's, it's a cool little tower defense game. Like I said, if you are into tower defense games, I feel like this is another one that you're going to really enjoy. If you're not so much into them, I don't think this game is really going to change your mind uh, because this is cut and dry tower defense it's what it is but it's got really nice uh it's got a really nice art style i like the animations uh the the voices and and quips and one-liners and stuff could be better but you know hey what are you gonna do uh but yeah evil defenders on the switch here runs good looks good it's a pretty cool little tower defense game so if that's what you're into i recommend checking it out uh there you go everybody i'll see you all next time